Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to Intuition. So, for those of you who are still studying for the NAPLEX, in today's video, we're going to be continuing our NAPLEX math solving problem series. Specifically, in today's video, we're going to be answering two questions. Stay tuned. <music> Some quick study tips for you guys. The best way to study for the NAPLEX is to solve as many problems as you can. So you really wanna make sure that you actually take your time out to actually refresh your memory on a lot of topics and that you actually solve problems. On the exam, they're going to throw a lot of different problems at you and they're going to be phrased in very different ways. But as long as you understand the concepts at the heart of the problem, you won't have to worry about getting into trouble on the exam because you'll know what to do to be able to get the right answers. So two big tips, solve a lot of problems and focus on the concepts. Okay, so with that said, today we're gonna answer two questions. Let's dive into question number one. All right, question number one states, a new test for detecting antibodies to a specific virus has been developed and yielded the results shown above. What are the sensitivity and specificity of this new test? Okay, they're telling us that there's a new test that's been developed to detect whether or not a person has antibodies has antibodies to a specific virus. It's a very relevant question. It's probably bound to show up. This test is going to search for antibodies to a specific virus. And so far, the results from this test is shown in the chart above. And we're being asked to measure the sensitivity and the specificity of this test, okay? So straightforward question, right? The only thing is we need to know what sensitivity and what specificity are. Sensitivity is the ability of a test to detect a true positive result. So in order for a test to be a good test and a valid test, we want the test to be able to detect a true positive result. And we also want the test to be good at being able to detect a true negative result. I want the test to be good at being able to tell me the truth. If you actually have the antibody and the test does a good job of telling you, hey, you actually have the antibody, that means that the test is sensitive. For just about any patient who actually has the antibody, the test will detect it. So that's a sensitive test. On the other hand, if you don't have the antibody, you want the test to be able to tell you, hey, you don't have the antibody. And if the test is really good at doing that, then the test is a very specific test because the test will not tell you that you have the antibody if you don't have the antibody. It's specific only to people who actually have the antibody. We just need to understand that concept for sensitivity and specificity. And once we do, this problem is easy. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve it. So for sensitivity, I want this test to be able to tell me that I actually have the, the antibody when I do actually have the antibody. Okay, so for the total amount of patients who actually did have the antibody, there's a total of 55, right? 50 plus five. Now let's take a look at how good this test was at being able to let these patients know that they actually did have the antibody. Out of the 55 patients who actually did have the antibody, the test was only able to detect it in 50 of these patients, right? Which is pretty good, right? 50 out of 55, not bad, okay. So what is 50 out of 55? 50 out of 55 is 0 0.909, which is approximately 91%. So the sensitivity of this test, 91%. So we know that answer choice A or answer choice C would be the answer. Now we just have to calculate the specificity. So for patients who actually did not have the antibody, how good was this test at telling them that they did not have the antibody? Total amount of patients who did not have the antibody is 68, right? 64 plus four. So 68 patients did not have the antibody. Now for these patients, how many of them did the test get it right? The test got it right for 64 of these patients. And the test got it right for 64 out of 68 of those patients. So what is 64 divided by 68? That's 0.94, which is 94%. Answer would be C, 91% sensitivity, 94% specificity. Easy, you just have to remember that concept for specificity and sensitivity. So now let's go on to question number two. Question number two states, a compounded pharmacist will be preparing a topical cream for a patient to put on his entire body one time. The patient is 72 inches tall and weighs 200 pounds. If the patient is to apply 70 grams per square meter of body surface area, how much of the topical cream should the pharmacist make? Okay, so another straightforward question, but we need to make sure that we actually know how to calculate certain quantities. Okay, so what quantities are important for this question? The quantity of body surface area, because that's what going to dictate how much cream the pharmacist makes for this patient. The pharmacist needs to make enough cream to be able to cover the entire body surface area of this patient. So what is the total body surface area of this patient? Well, we got to memorize this equation. And that equation is the total body surface area in meters squared is equal to the square root of the patient's height in centimeters times the patient's weight in kilograms 
divided by 3600. These types of equations are called empirical equations because analytically they don't really make a lot of sense because even take a look at the units on the left hand side we have the body surface area in meters squared but yet the height on the right hand side is given in, in units of centimeters so the units don't even really add up but from an empirical standpoint this equation has been found to be accurate in terms of being able to measure a patient's body surface area so this equation we just have to memorize it there is somewhat an intuitive concept in the equation in that if you think about what would increase a person's body surface area it would be their size, right? How big they are, their weight, and how tall they are. So that makes sense. So the height and weight make sense. We just have to remember the units. And the units don't really make sense, but you just have to memorize it. Okay? Height, centimeters, weight, kilograms, and the 3600, where does that come from? That's just an empirical fudge factor, right? But just memorize 3600, plug it into your calculator, get the right answer, and move on and pass your exam. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. For the patient's height, we need to get the patient's height in centimeters, but the patient's height is given in inches. So how do we convert inches to centimeters? There are 2.54 centimeters in an inch, okay? So we just have to multiply 72 inches times 2.54 centimeters. And when we do that, we get 183 centimeters. And now we just need to convert the patient's weight into kilograms. There are 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. So we just have to take 200 pounds and divide it by 2.2 to get the pounds in kilograms. And when we divide 200 by 2.2 what do we get we get 91 kilograms so the body surface area will be equal to the square root of 183 times 91 divided by 3600 and when we plug that into our calculator what do we get we get 2.15 meters square all right so now we know the patient's body surface area in meters square and now we're being told that the patient is going to apply 70 grams of the cream per square meter of body surface area so we just need to multiply 70 grams times 2.15 square meter. And when we do that, what do we get? We get 150.5 grams. And the closest answer is answer choice C, 150 grams. So it will take 150 grams of cream to, to cover the entire body surface area of this patient. And that's how you do this problem. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I hope that you guys learned something from this video. I hope that you're focusing on the concepts because this exam is quite expensive. And these days with coronavirus, it's very hard to find facility to be able to even accommodate you to take this exam. Some people are traveling and flying and going to all these remote places. So if you're gonna do all that, you wanna make sure that you're prepared and you're well equipped with the tools that you need to make sure that you pass this exam because you don't want to take it twice. It's a lot of money and it's, a, and it's very time consuming. So I'm here to help you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. We're going to continue to cover problems. I'll be covering plenty of NAPLEX problems on this channel, along with a lot of other different topics. So continue to tune in, uh, continue to learn, enhance your knowledge. As always, I'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye-bye.